Nós tivemos a oportunidade de conversar com a Olivia Alexander, que foi scriptwriter do Far Cry New Dawn. A entrevista é em inglês, então, para quem não conhece bem a língua estrangeira, tem a opção de você acionar as legendas ali embaixo. E tivemos aí a chance de conhecer um pouquinho desse backstage da criação de um game. Então, bora para a entrevista. Well, uh, I'm a scriptwriter and a narrative designer. So, what that means is uh, I work uh, both with the narrative team and uh, alongside level designers and world designers to help uh, make a game from the ground up. And how long do you work with this? Or is this your first uh, career plan or you start studying something else and then you decide to take this path? Uh, I've been doing this for about three years. Uh, and before that, I was a student. I was studying creative writing in Montreal. And you start working with games or another kind of stuff before? Um, my degree focused mainly on uh, uh, playwriting, fiction and poetry, but uh, Montreal has a very good uh, video games scene. So there were many uh, courses and organizations that were uh, both within and without uh, the school that I attended, and that really helped me understand that games can be as powerful as a storytelling medium as, as other things like uh, film and television and books. So you uh, already liked games before you start to work with them, or was it like a new experience you just met, met with games and started to work with them? No, I, I loved games beforehand. I thought that they were uh, They were very visceral in that even even sort of the, the high level, uh, sort of more uh, cerebral thematic storytelling uh, was was more visceral because you were involved as a player. And then the action sequences were even more sort of uh, nail biting and, and enthralling because you had your hands on the controller. The idea is that player agency makes the person who's uh, in experiencing the story an active participant rather than a passive person who's just being served something. And how is the creative process? Because when you do videos, you normally write down uh, the script and then you record a video. But in, in games, how this works? Because there are guys working in level design, you guys are working in scripts. Uh, sometimes I'm not sure if it, the level design have one idea, the script guys have another idea. How, how you manage this kind of uh, creative process? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, well, we have a very, uh, very communicative relationship with our creative director, and our uh, from there uh, he has a he sort of communicates very freely with the narrative director and the game design director, the world director, uh, and from there, uh, people who are world designers, level designers, or narrative designers uh, communicate with each other. So rather than just sort of one flow from the top down, it's, it's omnidirectional. Uh, however, the, the, the strongest sort of, uh, the strongest creative vision, the, the, the line that we tow as a, as a team usually comes from the creative director. The design and the script writing usually uh, in the, in, happens side by side. Um, uh, if one happens before the other, if you're not careful or if you're not paying attention, sometimes you can kind of tell as a player, um, but uh, for the most part, in Far Cry New Dawn, we, we, we really sort of worked alongside each other at the same time to sort of make sure that one didn't feel like just slapping a coat of paint on the other. Gotcha. But you don't have it sometimes when you have to change something to write down because something in the level design or the character design and vice versa? We did. Um, I think uh, every production has something that they you know might have to change something that isn't really working for uh you know for example um in testing things like that uh and honestly one of the one of the things that i think writing for games really prepares you for is the idea of being able to turn on the dime when you have to or when you're being directed to uh the idea is that because you're working with something very technical you're 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 giving a narrative voice to something very technical if those technical specifications change you have to be able to roll with it. You, you can't be precious. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be able to sort of, uh, to remember that the gameplay is just as much as part of the narrative as the script is in terms of designing narrative. So uh, being able to sort of um, adapt very, very quickly uh, to, to feedback and to needs is something any good game developer needs to be able to do. <laughs> And how is work with an, a kind of art that uh, the, another person in this, in this situation, the player, can kind of mess up with your 
work in real time? How is to deal with the thinking that the gamer maybe take a different path, maybe he will ignore all the dialogues? How how work with this kind of uh, different situation? <laughs> well, like I said before, the whole idea, uh, the, the best part about games is that it's player agency, that they have the choice. Agency is also, um, agency doesn't just mean action. Agency just means you are able to act and the decision to not act is a decision. Like the, the basically, I think what I'm trying to say is that if a player decides to skip dialogue or, or intentionally take a path that has less words in it, that's part of the point of the design of our medium is that you can choose to do that. I would hope that they don't, because I genuinely believe that to get the best and the most out of a game, you should hear what people have to say, because not very many people know this, but every single word from, from when you open up a game and it says press start, the words press start are written by a human being. Every single word in the game, in the menu that's recorded or spoken aloud is written by a person. Someone has taken the time to put it there. It's not, you know, generated by a computer. So. Um, I think if, if more people kind of remembered when they were playing through that, they would probably spend more time in the narrative and honestly get more enjoyment out of uh, out of a game. But to, to, to fully sort of answer your question, I think about it and I also <laughs> try not to. I'm just going to do my best and hope that people want to hear it. you have any idea oh, how is how big is a script for a game like Far Cry? you have any idea how many words, how many pages, how, how big is everything? Yeah. And if you have a guess of how much of it in the, the player will really read or see, because there are a lot of dialogues that I will probably not get, I know, close enough for that NPC to hear it, so probably I will not hear it. So there is a lot of uh, dialogues or script that I will probably will not see. Have any idea how big it is and how much of the whole script probably a player will see? Uh, I I used to know the number precisely, and I might get this wrong, so. You know, no <laughs> just, just, a, just a disclaimer. Uh -huh. but there is a way to know how many in the database we use for um, uh, for essentially all the words that you read or hear. There's a way to count how many lines there are, mm -hmm. and I think. Oh no, I think I, I don't think the number I'm going to give you is right. Something like eight thousand or 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 like 10,000 lines or something, which which is a really, it's a really abstract number, like to, to sort of try and, and quantify this stuff into into a, and to break it down into a number doesn't look like something. Mm -hmm. But if we were able to sort of line up a bunch of pages, it, 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 people could be able to visualize it. I think if you print it out, if you printed out all the, the lines and all the written dialogue and all the sort of UI text in our game, you'd probably be able to fill up a bathroom stall. Oh. <laughs> okay, I, I probably will play it. <laughs> not, yeah. <laughs> I will not print your, your game. Doesn't look like a great idea. <laughs> you guys have to write down everything. Start, exit, every single description of weapon and equipment and everything in the game. And sometimes the... Uh, you guys like to hide some jokes or something very special for you guys. And you have some you have some of those that is special for you. You hide something in some game somewhere, in some, I don't know, weapon description or or in a small dialogue that was special for you. Yes. <laughs> um, I think it's fun for for people to, to try and find it uh, themselves. One thing I do like to do is, is after after Far Cry 5 launched, for example, uh, uh, me and, and the members of my team would share Reddit threads about the item descriptions or the animal descriptions. People would make comments about the ones that we had written or the ones that we were proud of. Um, uh, I hope this, this translates well. This is a very, it's a pun, so it's a very- Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try but, our best. <laughs> um, I can't take credit for this one, but it's one of my favorites. I loved it so much and I was so <laughs> angry. My colleague wrote this one. Uh, we were naming, uh, uh, in Far Cry 5, we were naming uh, uh, cars and like the colors that you could color a car. Uh -huh. And one was like a, a compact car, sort of small. 
and it was blue. And I, I'd been, one of the sort of side effects of, of writing every single thing in the game is that sometimes you, you hit a wall, sometimes for the life of you, you know, you, you thought of like 16 different names for blue and all of a sudden you, you just hit a wall. So I asked my colleague to help and she thought up immediately, she looks at it and she wrote um, Blue Man Coop, like Blue Man Group. Yeah, yeah, we know that. I was so angry, it was so funny. I, it also kind of gives you insight as to my sense of humor. Um, but um, in Far Cry New Dawn, uh, I was very uh, intent on, you have a, a fang for hire named Horatio. Mm -hmm. He's a four. He is a, uh, a wrecking ball. He's huge. He just bowls people over. He's a tank. He can't knock him down. Or if you do, he, he can't stay down. And um, I was tasked with naming him and I really wanted to name him Horatio because that's the name of Hamlet's best friend. Oh. Like Hamlet. And to name a boar or a pig Hamlet is kind of on the nose. So I sort of wanted to sidestep it a little bit. Uh, and he also lives at Elsinore Farm, which is the name of Hamlet's castle. This is very nerdy, but yeah, I yeah. got enjoyment out of it. And hopefully there are some Shakespeare nerds out there who like it too. Uh, to do this the script, what kind of uh, things do you work uh, during your day? Is it just like a text editor in front of you? Or you have like part of the level design and characters in front of you, part of the game running, how you get inspiration and how you work on a daily basis? Well, it depends at what stage of production we're in, but uh, I suppose uh, sort of round about the middle, uh, towards the end of the middle perhaps, in front of you, you would have a, a copy of the build. So like the most recent version of the game uh, that uh, the people have in the open world running uh, and part of your computer. On the other part of your computer, you'd have the database where you type in most of the text um, uh, and then you would also, in our specific uh, scenario for, for Far Cry New Dawn, we also had um, sort of a, we did a lot, a lot of research and um, we, we sort of cut it and boiled it down to, uh, to multiple uh, PowerPoint slide text. So it doesn't sound very, you know, sexy or whatever, um, <laughs> but you would have this, this slide deck open and, and if, if you needed sort of reference as to like, oh, you know, would they still have toothpaste? Would would toothpaste? This is an example. Would toothpaste have survived 17 years after an apocalypse? And you can go to the the, the slide deck and you can look it up and kind of be like, eh, no, probably <laughs> not. <laughs> They're using chicory root and stuff like that. Um, but that's you know, if you need the research off the top of your head, uh, if you need to look in the build and see if something's working properly, like if a line needs to trigger to tell the player something and it's not, mm -hmm. you can. Uh, poke your level designer and be like, hey, can you, is, uh, this is something that may not be working, is it working on your end, that kind of thing. Um, I, I can imagine, especially in the early phases, you guys is wor you guys working with a really uh, early version of the game. How weird does this build look? Because nobody speaks nothing, there is no text, you're, you're like just walking through the level with nothing reading, nobody speaking nothing, it's, just, it's like that. How looks this early builds of the game that you have to work it with? Well, uh, before, for example, before something's recorded, uh, our database puts in a robot voice. Uh, so it'll just say like, you know. Like a voice assistant. I'm going to kill you. Oh, like, like just kind of like, oh, I'm so glad you're safe. Like that, <laughs> that kind of thing, just uh, complete robot voice, just so that you can hear something and know that the audio is working but that you don't necessarily have a recording yet to, to, to put it in, that sort of thing. Um, Will sound like Google Maps or ways. <laughs> Not quite like Trying Google to Maps. get to your work like, like that. Turn left, <laughs> like this. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little spooky, sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time that in Far Cry we have a continuation. We have a story uh, going on from the last one for the new one and uh, how how this was for you? Because you said you work it with the, the Far Cry Five, so I think that helps a lot. But you guys have some uh, some people that didn't work in the last Far Cry, and they have to take a look at all the scripts, or they have to play the last game. How how this works when you have to continue a long story? Well, most most of the writing team uh, for Far Cry New Dawn was from Far Cry Five. We had. I think one, maybe two people who weren't, but they were familiar with the game beforehand. 
and it was okay. They, they didn't have to, you know, read every single word of the script. That would be remember, it's a it's a bathroom stall. Yeah, it's a bathroom <laughs> stall. You, you you can you guys can scare newcomers. Maybe <laughs> print the the last script and, and say to them we they can. have to read it. <laughs> well, we don't because we're nice. Okay, okay. <laughs> But uh, they with New Dawn, it's it's helpful because it, it is a new world. It is. It's it's a new world that happens to be set in the same geographical location as Far Cry 5, but people are very different. Environment is very different. The things people write about and talk about are very different. And so if we, our, our newcomers to the team who were different helped us with that incredibly. Like to, to all of us needed to adjust uh, mentally to this completely new uh, world that sort of appears after this worldwide cataclysm everything's going to be different so it's it's a it's okay if there's if it was okay for newcomers to the writing team to not have to not rely super heavily on Far Cry 5 as a touchstone but at the same time we have some characters in common so we have to have some idea of their background right mm -hmm. so Lydia thanks a lot it's really really fun to talk with you and learn a little bit more of how the games we enjoy that much and how mm -hmm. how is to make them So thanks a lot. Yeah, it's good to talk to you.